Hello, my name is Olusha Gumbaye. I want to welcome you to Discourse Just Two, Just One or Three. Sorry, Discourse Nigerian People and Culture, because that have been trying to establish your knowledge of who you are as a Nigerian. A cause that have been trying to give you the picture of where you come from, the true picture of Nigeria, so as to help you demystify the notion that Nigeria is a no man's land. Because when you know you have the proper knowledge of your country, you will know how to contribute significantly to the development of your fatherland. Uh, having looked at the history of Nigeria, the peoples of Nigeria, those that constitute what you call Nigeria today, how they came into existence, how they've been living in the empires, city-states, and kingdoms. In fact, in their clans, we have been able to establish the fact that there were Nigerians before the coming of the colonial master. We took time to examine the colonial policies, looking at how colonialism officially was introduced through the amalgamation of the Northern and Southern Protectorate, including the colony of Lagos by Lord Lugard. Looking at, we have looked at the various colonial administrations. In fact, we went ahead to discuss constitution and constitutional development in Nigeria, starting from the first constitution that was taken into the, into, uh, for the administration of Nigeria. From Lugard in 1914, by 1922, a new colonial administrator was appointed, known as Sir Huch Clifford. Clifford became the colonial administrator of Nigeria in 1922, and he gave Nigeria a constitution when he assumed office, called the Clifford Constitution of 1922. After the Clifford Constitution, we Nigeria had another constitution in it, in her history, called the Richard Constitution of 1946. From the Richard Constitution of 1946, we had another constitution in 1951, the Mafasin Constitution. Then, after the Mafasin Constitution, we had the Linti Constitution of 1954. All these colonial constitutions were as a result the changes in the constitution were as a result of the challenges identified in the previous constitution. Of unique importance is the Clifford Constitution of 1922 that for the first time made provision for the elective principle where Nigerians were given room to participate in election, thereby leading to the formation of the first political party in the history of Nigeria formed by Sir Herbert Macaulay in 1923. The political party known as the NNDP, the Nigerian National Democratic Party, formed in 1923. Voting at that time was based on male limited suffrage. Only the male adults that had an income, an average income of £100 were allowed to vote in the election. And voting were only limited to Lagos and Calabar. The 1946 uh, Richard Constitution reduced the income definition of a voter from £100 to £50, although still limiting it to only male adults that are, were resident in Nigeria. All, and by extension, that Constitution was able to give quasi autonomy to the regional government regional government not until the linti constitution of 1954 that regions were given full autonomy whereby the constitution recognized the existence of the northern region the eastern region and the western region moving forward we looked at how the changes in the, the, the constitution because Nigeria actually gained her independence through con constitutional amendment. After the Linti constitution came, the constitution that ushered Nigeria into her development in 1960. 
1960 constitution that was drafted in 1959 gave October 4th of that year as the official date where Nigeria was freed from colonial domination of Britain. After that, we had the 1963 First Republic Constitution. As at that time, Nigeria became a full republic, a country of civil rule where the Queen of England ceased to have uh, Chief Dr. Nandi Azikwe as her, her representative in Nigeria. Because as at independence, Nandi Azikwe was the Governor General of Nigeria representing the authority of the Queen. Moving forward, we had the 1979 Second Republican Constitution, then 1989 Third Republican Constitution, and presently we are operating the 1999 Constitution as amended because we are in the Fourth Republic. A republic is a period of civil rule in the country whereby we have civil authority taking charge of the affairs of the country. Now, it is time to look at the Nigerian economy and the Nigerian national development. The economy ha has to do with everything that revolves around the production, the distribution, the exchange of goods and services within the society. Anything that involves production, distribution, in, in fact, consumption and exchange of goods and services within the, within the society is a factor as the economy. And development on its part talks about a change that has taken place over a period of time, the transformation of change from, quant qualitative, from quantitative to qualitative. It is a, a process whereby growth have been sustained for a long period of time, thereby affecting the lives of the people, the standard of living of the people being touched. That's why we talk about development. It is a process of transformation, a sustained transformation that has taken place in the society in terms of the quantity and quality of services and of goods and services that have been enjoyed by a majority of the people of the society. What is the nature of the Nigerian economy? The Nigerian economy today did not come into existence as a result of colonial creation. In fact, one of the things that attracted the colonialists to Nigeria was the abundance of economic uh, resources in the Nigerian society as at that time. We know that agriculture played a significant role in the economic development of Nigeria. The economic history of Nigeria can never be complete without making reference to how agriculture was key. The cultivation of land and rearing of animal for human consumption was in vogue. Every society or every region in Nigeria had its own peculiar agricultural practice. It, in, it could range from fishery, livestock farming, crop production, and so on and so forth that involved the cultivation of land and rearing of animal, all to satisfy human need. For instance, in the northern part of Nigeria, where we had uh, the highest number of uh, people living as in terms of population and the largest landmass of Nigeria. In fact, Nigeria has the highest arable land in Africa. When I mean arable land, because 85% of Nigeria land is so I support agricultural production. Side because we had few mountains and rivers within the interland. So the land in Nigeria support the cultivation of both food and cash crop. Food crops like like grains, like tuber, root and tuber, any crop that you know that can be eaten directly is referred to as food crop. Take each of the state of the federation. There is no state that doesn't have one agricultural produce or the other. In the north, you have grains in excess. Millet, maize, sugar, or gum. You have them in excess in terms of the support that the land gives to it. So agriculture was the mainstay of Nigerian economy prior to 
the coming of the colonial man. Even going down to the south, where the rainfall is higher than what you have in the north, they also have their own agricultural produce, where they are very well known for the production of cash crops like cocoa, like coffee, like timber, like palm produce, and so on and so forth. They have timbers of different types and sizes. Cotton played a prominent role in the economy of the northern Nigeria. Cotton. Cotton and granite. You've heard of the popular Kano, the granite pyramid of Kano? Yes. It was not an imagination. It was so real that the colonial masters had to buy into it. They had to exploit it to the fullest while they were in, a, in the northern region. Now, because of the vegetation of the southern part of Nigeria with an average rainfall of more than 1,500 per year. Cultivation of cash crops, of cocoa, of rubber, rubber, palm plantation, forestry, and forest products were in abundance driving the economy of the areas. Now, moving forward, with agriculture, we also have side by side what you call mining. Mining was also a very good uh, economic activity in Nigeria. Mining, even up until now, we are still mining one solid mineral or the other. There is no state also without one natural resource or the other, without one solid mineral or the other to, to mine, from tin and col uh, columbite, coal, we had iron ore, in uh, Kogi State for instance, we have bitumen, we have barazite, we have kaolin, name it, almost all the Mineral, solid minerals that you need in the world today are domiciled in one part of Nigeria or the other, all also contributing to the economy of Nigeria. Now, we are of specific importance to the Nigeria economy is the oil. The oil, the oil, I mean the oil, the crude oil, the black liquid diamond that changed the course of Nigeria economic development. The discovery of oil in commercial quantity at Olebere in the present Bayesa state, as far back as 1958, have changed the course of economic activities in Nigeria. In fact, after the, at the discovery, attention was still being placed or focused on agriculture and mining until the oil boom of 1970s. So from 1980 specifically, the diversification of Nigeria economy from agriculture and mining to oil take full course, thereby allowing oil to take charge of the economy development of Nigeria. The Nigeria economy became oil driven, which by extension brought the state in the Niger Delta, the nine states that constitute what we call the NDDC, Niger Delta Development Commission. The nine states which include Abia, Imo, Ondo, River State, Cross River State, Delta State, Bayesa State, and Akwa Ibon State. Akwa Ibon, Edo, Edo State, these are the nine states of, of uh, NDDC. These states have now become the center, the nucleus of Nigerian economic discourse because all we now seek for is to first maintain peace in the Niger Delta region of Nigeria because of the prominent the resource, the oil and gas that is that are that are domiciled in these states play in the Nigerian economy. However, the price of oil is not being determined by Nigeria. It is an, international con an internationally controlled price. 
the commodity is internationally controlled by OPEC. By OPEC, I mean the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, countries that have the power to expo export petro uh, petroleum resources. Now, let's look at Nigeria and her development. What are the problems of development in Nigeria? What are the factors that have, in one way or the other, hampered the development of Nigeria? Number one factor is external to Nigeria. The coming of the European powers, what you call imperialism, is the first factor to consider when you are discussing the problem of national development in Nigeria. As we have discussed before, you discover that all the sections, all the cultural areas in Nigeria have their own, had their own development uh, journey. They were moving, developing at their own pace, progressing in their own way, meeting their needs, producing consuming, distributing, and exchanging the economic goods and services in their own way until the contact between, uh, between Nigeria and Europeans, thereby altering the course of development in Nigeria. Now, the monocultural nature of Nigeria economy, from agriculture, which employed over 70% of Nigerians, in fact, trading was also an economic activity that has lasted in Nigeria for hundreds of years. May I let you know that before the coming of the wise, of the, of the British, of the European, Nigerians were engaged in international trade. History has it that Nigerians in Kanem Borono Empire were exchanging goods as far as Agadez and Tripoli. They tried taking their goods as far as Agadez in Niger and Tripoli in Libya. As that, that was, that, that was a, an international trade of its own realm until the advent of colonial masters that came to introduce exploitation. Nigeria economy was such that it, it was driven by self-sufficiency. Every household unit had its own way of survival. So they were living and so, so surviving producing their basic need. Agriculture was at subsistence level, supplying the, the basic necessities of the family. And the excesses were taken to the village market for exchange. However, when the imperialists came, they introduced what we call the legitimate trade. The trade that changed the history of Nigeria, where agricultural produce were exploited. Nigerians started producing what they did not need and looking for what they need. Two, the nature of leadership in the country. Every society, the development is driven by leaders. Having left Nigeria as colonialism, uh, at, uh, at independence in 1960, the set of Nigerians that, that assumed leadership that the independence of Nigeria was handed over to were more or less referred to as neo-colonial agents. So they introduced policies that further underdeveloped the country called Nigeria. Puppet leadership, leadership who we steal Nigerians with and take to the countries that have already developed or that are far ahead of Nigeria in terms of development were the ones that Nigeria was handed over to. So this leadership were key in defining the level of development and underdevelopment that Nigeria still suffer till date. Then you talk about the, the internal crisis. Don't forget that the civil war that Nigeria went into as a country between 1967 and 1970 have not even been able to get its cure. The wounds have not been cured from the history of Nigeria. We have skirmishes here and there. The inter interterritorial and interreligious war, inter-community wars here and there, all this hindering 
the development of Nigeria. Then we talk, look at the giant called corruption with its own ramification as one force that have been hindering the development of Nigeria, where grand corruption have helped to underdevelop Nigeria. After the, the, the British colonialists with their European supporters and American aid have left officially, the Nigerians that will now have are those who enjoy or who survive a grand style corrupt practices where the state resources are misappropriated or misapplied. Moving forward, they have discovered that the economy as a very key factor in development is one that helped to understand the production, the distribution, the exchange of goods and services of every society in which Nigeria is key in this def definition. By now, you have seen the challenges facing Nigerian development. In your own way, the question I will leave to you is how can you help solve the national development problem of Nigeria? Until I see you next time, I remain on the Thank you.